we recently released the content blocks feature for Thrive Architect. And in this video, I want to give you a more practical example of how you can use content blocks to give a serious upgrade to a piece of content marketing. So if you create blog posts, this is one of the ways in which you can use content blocks to just upgrade the quality and professionalism of what you publish. Hello, I'm Shane Malach from Thrive Themes, and I'm going to show you a semi-hypothetical example here to give you a tour of how to use content blocks. And I say semi-hypothetical because I don't want to show you like me writing an entire blog post or something like that. To tighten it up a bit, we're basically using the concept and structure of a real blog post, but with filler content so I can just focus on kind of using and customizing content blocks. So here's my semi-hypothetical blog post. And this post, let's imagine it's about some kind of a list building strategy, right? On topic for the Thrive Themes blog, list building strategy. And I have a basic structure. This would be like all of the, all of the content and structure ready for the post where I have some hook at the beginning and then I introduce the problem. You know, the current problem with list building, here's why it's not working. Here's why other strategies are not working. And then I introduce the new strategy and I give kind of an overview. It's like, here's how we're gonna do and what we're going to do differently. And then I have a part where I give actual instructions. So here's the step-by-step -step of how to actually do this. And maybe I have two different options here. I say, all right, this overall strategy I presented, here's two ways to do it. One, you can use a funnel of landing pages. And number two, you can use webinars for lead generation. And so I explain the step-by-step and then we have a conclusion in the end. So this would be basically my content and the structure of my content is there, but right now it's just a wall of text. So everything is just written out. And as you can see here, I've just used filler text. So you don't have to watch me write, uh, you know, stuff word by word, but you can imagine this is what the blog post looks like. And here are some examples of how you could enrich a post like this using content blocks. So let's start when we introduce the problem. Here we have a great opportunity to make this kind of more credible and to give this more weight by adding a quote. So let's drop in a content block right here. And we can filter our list here. So we can see all of the content blocks right here, but we can also filter our list in various ways. And let's start here by choosing the block type quote. And among the quotes, you can see there's kind of two different classes of quotes or two different types of quotes. We have on the one hand, we have quotes like this one here, where it is kind of a lot of emphasis on a relatively short quote, right? This is like one spicy comment <laughs> made by someone. And another kind of quote is like this one where we have more space. So here you can see we can have several paragraphs. So this is more like uh, we asked an expert and here are some tips from that expert. And I'm gonna, let's use both of them, right? I'll choose, um, let's go with this one and I'll insert this into my post. And here, I also wanna show you some of the customization you can do. So obviously we would change the image and upload a different image. So let's say this person here is an authority on email marketing or marketing or something. And here I'd have you know one spicy quote by this well-known marketer, right? And that is what I mean by, you can, you can really give emphasis to something if you're presenting a problem or a new strategy or, or a mindset. And you can add a quote by someone who's recognized in your niche that just gives it so much more weight. And also because we have a quote element here, we have an image, it takes up a bit more space. It's kind of eye catching. So that makes people, you know, it can also stop someone from just like skimming through the post. It's like, oh, here's a face I recognize. And what do they have to say? So, you know, whatever the quote is, you know, the money is in the list. Uh, I don't have, I don't, I didn't think of a clever quote, but you know, this like every marketer ever, some quote. And what I can also do is of course I can customize this. So maybe I don't want this to take up quite as much space, especially since it's such a short quote now. And I can change the colors. So if I choose the content block here, I can change the colors, but I think actually this kind of neutral gray works quite well. So that's our first element. I'm adding a quote by an expert in here to kind of underline the problem I'm stating. Then we talk about the new strategy. So I introduce, here's the new way to do it. And here's another opportunity to use a quote. 
So instead of just saying, hey, here's my opinion about this, again, I can kind of bring in an expert and here maybe I'm, you know, it's basically I called someone up and told them, hey, what's your take on this? Or maybe even quote from a book or something like that. So again, to bring in an expert opinion. So let's drop in another quote. And this time, well, the other type of quote. This time we're looking at more, let's say this kind of thing. Let's see what that looks like. Insert that, I think that's fine. So here, let me just copy some of this. So here we have more space here to develop someone's ideas, right? And I can maybe highlight the part as well. And so here I can kind of bring in an expert's opinion or tips by an expert to enrich my post further. Once again, of course, we're gonna replace that image. We're just gonna use the same one again. And we could change the colors, but I'll do more of the color customization further on. So right there, we've basically added two types of quotes to add more kind of rich content and more expert opinion into our content. Now let's go into where we give the exact instructions on how to do something. Right here, I'm going to insert a call to action because here we have, might have something like, you know, we're going to talk about list building and it's like, you know, by the way, we're using Thrive Leads for all of this. And this is something we often do when we, when we have like general um, content on general topics, like we will teach list building. But when it comes to the, you know, the step-by-step, -step, okay, how do I actually do this? We say, well, obviously we're gonna use Thrive Leads because that's our product. You can try to follow this same strategy using other tools, but we're going to use Thrive Leads while we're showing you this. And this would be an opportunity for a call to action. So instead of just having a link in there that says, yeah, Thrive Leads, whatever, we can insert a call to action. And for a call to action that's like, in the flow of text, I simply wanna get people's attention to, hey, there's a thing here, you know, Thrive Leads, go get it. I, I don't want a, a large one like this, which will take up, you know, the majority of the screen. This is more of a, by the way, kind of call to action. So a smaller one like this might be a better fit. So I could choose, I'll choose one with an image here maybe, or maybe even this one, it's a bit more subtle. Let's try this one, I'll insert this. And as you can see, so as soon as I insert it, it takes on the fonts from my blog post. So it can look slightly different in the preview because as soon as you drop it in the post, it will like take over the same fonts to fit in. So here I would write something like, you know, get Thrive Leads. Now our premium lead generation tool for WordPress. And then I have a button and I do two things on this button. First of all, I can, well, one, one thing I can do is if I choose the content block here, I can always get back to the content block and the breadcrumbs. I can change the color of the button, right? The, the button has an accent color. I can change that to something else, but I can also change the button style, which I wanna show as well. So when I select the button itself here, obviously I would link to, so here I'm gonna go thrivethemes.com forward slash leads and open in a new tab. That's the actual link on the button. Then the other thing is, in most cases, when I'm working on a site, I have kind of default buttons saved, default button templates. And so I would have these saved as styles, and I have that indeed here. I have a, a default button in two sizes. I choose the small one, and that's basically the one I want. Make it a bit wider. And that is pretty good for our call to action. So here we have you know, a relatively subtle call to action, but it's still more attention grabbing than just having a link in the text. And the customization I did here is pretty minimal. All I'm doing is I'm basically bringing in kind of my brand colors or my brand buttons into the existing template so that in the fewest steps possible, I get the combination of a pre-built template plus my own style. All right, so now we have a call to action in here, and then we have two options, and these will be the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. Now, instead of just having a bunch of text that says, you know, do this first, do that next, why not add a list, right? So here, there's another content block. If I'm gonna be giving step-by-step -step instructions, I can go to steps here. There's various ways in which I can have a list, a styled list of steps. So I can insert one of these, and see what it looks like. 
And in this case, I think actually, I don't like this one as much. So I think I don't need this much of a title or a title at all. And the list itself, it's not really what I'm looking for. So one of the things I can do, I can delete this block, but I can also go to the content block and I can go back to template and go back into the template view here. If I'm just, I wanna replace it with a different content block in the same position. Uh, maybe let's try this one and insert this. And here I like this a bit better. So let's customize this. I'll get rid of the title, I don't need that. And, and now I have my steps. And what I'll do here for sure is I want brand colors, right? So I'll go to the content block and my accent color is gonna be my brand color. So let's say I have this orange or whatever the brand color is, right? I change that. And the other element here, we have a background on the list item. So maybe I wanna change that as well. And what I do instead, so that the kind of the list uh, design of this doesn't go lost, I'm gonna choose the column here and add a, a border. I'm just gonna make a light gray border here. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, so here we have our list steps. Now, I maybe have, I probably have not exactly three steps here, right? So what I can do is I can look for the outermost container of a list item. So if I click on any element here, it will show me the nesting of that element. So we can see that this text is inside a column, which is inside a columns container, which is inside a content box, which is inside another content box, which is inside a content block. And I wanna find, so the column, the individual column is not what I'm looking for. The columns are also not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the content box that is around the columns. That is, so usually we wrap each element in a separate content box so that you can style that content box. And what you can also do is you can duplicate it. So if I duplicate this, that gives me very neatly a fourth step to use here. So now I have a list of four steps with my own style. So what I can do now is I can go to the content block, I'll duplicate the entire content block and I will move the content block down here for strategy number two or option number two, right? Where I'll also have a list of steps. Maybe here I have fewer steps. I'll go to this content box, the number four one, delete it. So now I have a list of four steps here, a list of three steps here. And that's just a much nicer, much cleaner way of presenting something like, you know, a step-by-step -step instructions of, of what to do than to just have them in writing. Next, because I have two different strategies here, so I'm giving people two different options to make it easier for people to decide, for my readers to decide which one of these two strategies they should follow, I can give them an evaluation of each strategy. And this is where I will use another content block. So at the end, of strategy number one, I'm inserting another content block, which is going to be pros and cons. So these are content blocks where I can kind of lay out with bullet points, the pros and cons of whatever it is, right? A strategy that I'm presenting, a product that I'm reviewing or whatever else it is. So I'm gonna choose one of the most compact or probably the most compact view here. I don't want that to take up too much space. So I'll insert this one. And once again, let's go into some customization here. So in our main options, we have a lot of things we can do with uh, colors, such as I can make this blend into my post more by removing the background. But personally, I like it to be slightly separated from the background. And I can go and change all these colors. I think this works quite well and the content blocks are generally designed to blend in as well as possible. Right? The idea is that you can drop these in and it's almost always gonna look decent but you can customize whatever you want. So maybe I have you know, different shades of, of green and red that I wanna use here. And as you can see, I can customize this one and the check marks basically in one go. So if I wanna change these tones here, make this one a bit more orangey, then I can do that in just a couple of moves. I can also here, of course, I would customize. So first of all, I would change this to H3 because it's underneath and, um, it's already under, actually it's already underneath an H3. So perhaps it should be an H4 or an H3. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, um, one of those two would be right. And I'll center align that. And then this would be, you know, strategy one, pros and cons. And I'll remove this line here. 
and shift this around a bit. So, and I'm showing this just to show like right, how much um, you can kind of easily drop this and then do a couple of tweaks to make it fit that specific purpose that you have in mind right now. So another thing we can do, for example, is with these icons. So maybe I want these to be a bit larger. We do that on both of these lists because it's group editing. They all um, change size at the same time. And also maybe I don't like the icons, so I can also uh, change all these icons at the same time. So if we have, we're looking for a check here. So let's say we want this one and then a similar one here. So this is called times regular. For some reason it's called times the cross. Um, and I'd rather have this one. So we have a customized or slightly customized look on this achieved fairly easily. I'll then choose this content block again and duplicate it and then drop it down here because I have two strategies, two list of steps. So I'd have pros and cons for each of them. And this will help my reader make a better decision. If I can say, well, you know, if you do this kind of thing or if you're in this kind of business, then choose this strategy. And if you're under different circumstances, choose this kind of strategy. And once again, it also adds kind of this visual flair to my blog post and it gives this, it just makes it look more professional than if it's just a bunch of paragraphs on a page. And then we have our conclusion at the end where maybe we also wanna sign off kind of at the end, we can drop in a call to action. Let's go back to calls to action. And here I maybe wanna have a more weighty call to action uh, like this one. So this is larger, more attention grabbing. Once again, I can quickly customize this. I'm going to change this button style to my brand button here. And I change the, the link and the text and all that. Um, change the size. I'll change this image with my Thrive Leads image. So maybe I wanna have a call to action or get Thrive Leads basically. And I can drop this in and just make something that stands out much more than simply a link. So that is a quick tour of a few ways in which you can use the content blocks that we've created to enrich a blog post and to basically just add a lot more visual interest, more authority, more things that grab attention, more things that drive action like clicks and things like that into a blog post. So those are a few of the countless possibilities that are opened up to you with the content blocks feature in Thrive Architect. Now, we'd love to hear from you. What kinds of content blocks would you like to see in the future to help you make even better content? So leave a comment below with your suggestions.